Hi, and welcome back to TikTok Tuesday. This is episode two, where is Tourette's syndrome? We're gonna be focusing on the brain, mainly the anatomy and where Tourette's syn syndrome is in the brain. It's very complicated, so I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible uh, for my own benefit and for everyone else's <laughs> because it's very complex. And even though we don't know the cause of Tourette's syndrome, research has narrowed down which parts of the brain are affected by Tourette's syndrome. Um, even more than that, like it, it gets <laughs> real in depth and the more complex and the more in depth it gets, the harder it is to understand, uh, talking about specific neurotransmitters and everything. It gets way too complicated, at least for me to explain. So I'm going to keep it again, as simple as I can. So first I am going to start, uh, with the anatomy of the brain so that I can try to <laughs> try to explain what's going on. So like I said in the last video, Tourette's syndrome originates in the brain, the central nervous system, uh, which is the brain and the spinal cord. It also uh, is, contains neurons, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so the basic anatomy of the brain, we have three main structures. It's gonna be the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the midbrain. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It's the part of the brain where a, a, a lot of people really think is the brain and that's all there is to the brain even though there's more structures deep and superficial so the cerebrum that is what contains all four lobes of the brain so you have the frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe and occipital lobe the frontal lobe is going to be the largest part of the cerebrum it's right here like right here in the brain the front i can't do that enough um it's the largest of four lobes and is responsible for important cognitive skills such as problem solving, memory forming, language, judgment, impulse control, personality, emotional expression, social and sexual behavior, and control of voluntary movement or activity. That one's important. Um, it's also the, not the site, but it's also includes what's called the precentral gyrus, which I would say is about right here, about right there, um, which is just the primary motor area of, uh, of the frontal cortex which again we'll get to as well actually I'm not gonna talk about the pre the primary motor area or sensory area again that's also a lot more in depth but doesn't have really anything to do with Tourette syndrome um, but anyway where I left off the parietal lobe is right behind the frontal lobe it's about right here and it interprets sensory input such as temperature taste touch and movement and that part also contains the post central gyrus i know i said i wouldn't say this but um it's also like i said the pre-central gyrus is like right here post central is gonna be right there that's very vague what i'm doing i'm just mapping it out in my hair <laughs> which is the primary sensory area not my hair the post central gyrus um, the temporal lobe is next. Uh, it's a smaller part, and that one is uh, sensory processing that's connected to your memories. So even though your frontal lobe is forming the memories, they're being stored and put in your temporal lobe. That's where they're being kept. Um, they integrate those with sensations of, well, all five sensations actually. Taste, sound, touch, smell, sight. Um, sight also is the sight and the occipital lobe. It's where the visual perception is. That's all the occipital lobe is. And it's right back here. So those are all four lobes. And with the entire cerebrum, there are two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and then the right hemisphere. That is connected, not connected, I'm sorry, separated by a longitudinal fissure. Uh, just like I said, it separates the left from the right. The left hemisphere, this side of your brain, is going to control everything on the right side of your body. And then vice versa. So the right side, right hemisphere of your brain is going to control everything on the left, which is also contralateral is what that means. Um, I think I've covered the cerebrum. I, again, I have notes to look off of, so I, you know, don't lose track like I'm doing right now. Um, the central sulcus, that's one uh, that separates the frontal and the parietal lobe. It's like right in the middle also of where the precentral and postcentral gyri are. Gyri, gyri. I don't know how to say it. Whatever. It's like right there. Anyway, not that important for uh, this one. Uh, next is the cerebellum. It's about um, kind of looks like a walnut sized, not sized. It looks like a walnut or something like that. Um, that organ, and it hangs uh, right below the occipital lobe of the brain. Yeah, um, which is just a primary site of. Um, 
well, I can't speak. Coordination, sorry, equilibrium is the word I was looking for. Coordination, speech, posture, balance, equilibrium, coordinates all of that. And then the third main part of the brain is the brain stem. And basically the, what the brain stem does is it controls the flow of messages between the brain and then the rest of the body. So we got those messages being sent. Um, in the brain is also, sorry, brain stem. In the brain stem, there's three main parts. You got the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the mid in the midbrain. Starting with the medulla oblongata, I guess starting at the bottom or the top of the brain stem going up would be uh, the medulla oblongata, which regulates involuntary functions like digestion, uh, heart rate, breathing, swallowing, and functioning of the heart rate and blood vessels. After that, we got the pons, which is just a relay not, not the primary relay station, but it relays signals from the cerebrum and the diencephalon, which I haven't gotten to yet, um, to the cerebellum and is responsible for your sleep-wake cycle. After that, or the last part of that, is gonna be the midbrain. The midbrain is gonna be the most important when talking about Tourette's syndrome. That's why I was going through all the anatomy, so you know what the midbrain is. The midbrain is very impo uh, important for motor movement, primarily, and then auditory and visual processing. Uh, and also movements in the eye, that's what I found out. I didn't know that. Um, that is, I wanna say, all the superficial parts of the brain. Um, yeah, those are all the parts that are superficial. I didn't explain what that meant on the outside that you can see until you uh, dive deeper. The deeper you go, the more in depth it goes, like I said earlier, which, yeah. So the corpus callosum is what's inside that separates, or sorry, connects, that's what connects the two hemispheres and how they can talk to each other and send messages from this side to the side and all over. Like I said, contralateral. Um, so yeah, like I said, the midbrain is going to be the most important for talking about Tourette's syndrome. This is where uh, it decides what actions are going to be carried out or not carried out. This is why it's really hard for people with Tourette's syndrome to resist the urge to tick. They have that, what's called a premonitary, premonitary urge. Um, and that's why it's hard. So the main three sites, I would say, of Tourette's syndrome is gonna be the prefrontal cortex, the basal ganglia, and the thalamus. Now the prefrontal cortex is in the frontal lobe, is the, is, uh, the, the front of the frontal lobe. Um, which plays a role in development, coordination, adjustment, planning for the future, focus and attention, impulse control, and emotion management. And I said earlier how the frontal cortex is, in, is also responsible um, for uh, the motor area. Like I said, the precentral gyrus is uh, important for that. Um, there are articles, I wasn't really going to mention this, but there are research articles that claim that the prefrontal cortex might be the main site of Tourette's syndrome. I don't want to, I, I don't think so. There's a lot more evidence on the basal ganglia. Um, a lot more actually. Um, so the basal ganglia is primarily responsible for motor control and limbic functions. And then after that we have the thalamus, which is really the relay station that's in the midbrain, in the diencephalon, which is in the corpus callosum. Uh, and it relays motor and sensory signals uh, throughout the cerebral cortex. So, I think I've covered everything, all the difficult parts. Um, what I did not mention earlier was neurons. So I keep talking about these signals that are being transmitted and sent throughout everything. Well, these are being sent via neurons, which are nerve cells that send and receive signals slash messages throughout the body. And these messages are neurotransmitters, or messengers, sorry which are just chemicals that travel up and down neurons. So uh, like dopamine and serotonin, what's called GABA. Lots of, there's a ton of neurotransmitters. I'm not gonna get into them because like I said, it gets very complicated and there are plenty of articles that like to get more in depth with which ones are more involved with Tourette syndrome. Anyway, so here is basically what's going on. We have signals. We have neurons that are firing throughout everything in our body and our brain everywhere all the time nonstop. When you have Tourette syndrome you have 
a neurotransmitter that's being sent to your neurons or a signal, sorry, a signal or a message that's being sent to your brain, to your thalamus, it's relaying and then your basal, it's saying, hey, why are you ticking? You should probably not do that. Well, there's a malfunction in the basal ganglia that's saying, well, I don't know, I can't do anything about it when it's supposed to, when that's the primary function of the basal ganglia. So that's why people who have tick disorders or Tourette syndrome cannot control their ticks. It, it's, you can, you can see it in the brain. It's really there. People who have Tourette syndrome, they're not faking it. I mean, I'm sure there are fakers out there, but it, it's something that you cannot control, which is why they are called involuntary movements. Um, like I said, it, it goes way more in depth from there. Um, one article that I've uh, written a paper uh, referencing it is uh, mentioned something called the cortico basal ganglia loop or CBG, which they claim is the primary site of Tourette syndrome. Like I said, there's plenty of evidence linking the basal ganglia mainly to Tourette syndrome and ticks, but again, it goes way more deeper than that. Um, I'm really sorry that this was confusing. I hope it wasn't. Anyway, that does do it. And again, I'm sorry for looking to the left of the screen or to the right. I don't know what y'all are looking at, <laughs> but it's all my notes that I've written down trying to condense what I know and don't know. What I don't know is not there, but <laughs> anyway, it, it does get very confusing. It's very complex. And like I said, we, we really don't know the actual cause of Tourette syndrome. All we can see is what is what is affected, if that makes sense. Um, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that is it for today's episode. I'm sorry it's longer than I wanted it to be, but I hope someone learned something. I hope everyone learned something from this, that people with Tourette syndrome really can't help it. That's the takeaway from this today. And I will see y'all next week for episode three. Bye.